Welcome to Marbella Life. Today, I'm joined by Ian Blackwell, a true Scottish gentleman who made his way to Marbella 38 years ago. He's the mastermind behind the coast's most popular magazine, Essential, which is celebrating an incredible 25 years this autumn. Over the next hour, you'll hear the fascinating story of how a humble man who once studied pure mathematics and lived in India built one of the most successful magazines in Marbella. Enjoy! I've always had an issue about working for other people and, and being, uh, you know, under... And, and that's why I've ended up being my own boss down here. Mm. But when I came back from India, I was so far removed from even further from going into that mm-hmm. typical uh, rat race work environment. You know, suit tie, 48 weeks of mm. the year, four weeks holiday. You've been out of the system already. Woke I am, and I went in there and you wouldn't believe that I went, I was walking into places like mm-hmm. going, okay, you got one minute to listen to this. Otherwise you're seriously going to regret it when you find out what you missed out on. Well, Stuff like that, like, yeah. But what do you think is like the key or like the secret to your success? Why has it been so successful? 25 years of a magazine in Marbella, it's, you don't really have a competition, it's, do you? It's true. It's very hard to be top of the market in a market like this, which is pretty fickle. For mm-hmm. 20, We've been top of the market we, 25 years, but 20 of this, we've been the top, top magazine. And how has the digital marketing affected your business? That's a really good question. And actually, that ties in uh, totally with what we're just talking about. What is your advice for long-lasting marriage? So hello everyone, here we are in the beautiful Sandon shop in Foro Marbella and my guest today is the lovely Ian from Essential magazine, he's mainly known for that but I'm really intrigued to find out more about Ian because all I really know is that you do this <laughs> magazine but I'm sure you're doing so many other things and I'd love to hear your story. So thank you for coming and I'm so happy you found the time to, to come and talk to me. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I uh, Shall I give you a little brief yeah. synopsis about yes. myself? So if you can just talk briefly about yourself, like where you're from, yeah. just a Feel little... Feel free to ask me any questions in the, yeah, in the, I will. <laughs> in, in the interim. Yeah. All right, so I'm Scottish, mm-hmm. um, born in Scotland and grew up in a town near Glasgow. Mm-hmm. That was a, quite a tough upbringing, I can tell you. Uh, then I went to university in Edinburgh. I studied there for five years. I did um, two degrees in the end, um, pure mathematics and an MBA. Mm. Now, don't ask me how I ended up in the magazine business. I will the... ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, well, it's a bit of a story. Mm-hmm. That's um, what we're here for. Yeah, so I was living in Edinburgh at, and I love that city. I've just been back recently, actually. It was so nice to be there, 11 degrees for... Mm. 5th to the 10th of September, I was there visiting my son, who lives there now for a year on a work placement. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, that 11 degrees, the first two days, it Mm -hmm. was like getting out because it was still plus 30 here with that humidity. After about the third, fourth day, Mm -hmm. then you start to remember, maybe that's why I don't live here anymore, (laughs) because the living is not that comfortable. Anyway, um, following university, I went traveling because I'm a little bit of an unorthodox kind of guy. And I wasn't comfortable going to work for people in the traditional way, going mm. into businesses. Mm-hmm. I mean, with these qualifications, classically, I would have been doing something like something pretty boring, actually, like, <laughs> I don't know, accountancy mm-hmm. or, you know. Then. But, but what made you go study that back then? Because was... Uh, I was very good at maths at school. Mm. Um, so it was just it was, like a natural yeah. flow. I you're... actually was very good and I enjoyed the subject at that point. It wasn't the same at university. By the time I got to third year maths, mm. I was like, pretty much hating it because uh, as above all it was pure mathematics Mm -hmm. so it was like so theoretical Uh, and everyone in my course I had I couldn't relate to at all Mm. because I was like a a guy who was having fun going out partying doing the kind of things young people do Mm -hmm. and they were all boffins I mean Mm. totally died and and some of them are I even have turned into university professors of mathematics are you still in touch with them uh, not the ones, well, one actually that uh-huh. is a professor, yeah, because he was semi-okay. He uh, even plays guitar in a band, but most right. of the rest of them are, <laughs> <Semi-okay>. you know. Semi-okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about people who, um, first of all, they were mostly English, not Scottish. Mm-hmm. Because when I went to Edinburgh, it was, um, it, it was basically because I lo- fell in love with the city when I went there to visit mm-hmm. with my parents when I was mm-hmm. about 10. And we were walking around in this amazingly beautiful city. It's about 40 miles, so what's that about? I don't know, 50 something kilometers away from where, where um, we, we lived. Mm-hmm. And um, 
there are much nearer universities like Glasgow and mm -hmm. so on, but I, I just had this romantic mm -hmm. vision of going to Edinburgh. Because my maths results were so good from school, they accepted me into the course. And it was only when I got there, mm -hmm. I realized, God, it's like the number uh, three or four in the country after mm -hmm. Oxford and Cambridge wow. for that subject, mm -hmm. not for everything, mm -hmm. medicine, yeah, mm -hmm. and a few other things is really high for that subject. So that meant that everybody, or not everybody, but a large uh, contingent of people doing maths, mm -hmm. it, at, at that time were people who didn't get into Oxford or Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So they were going to Edinburgh as their third choice. Mm -hmm. And that meant they were walking around talking like, um, oh, jolly good lecturer this morning, what who? Yeah, to each other all day long. <laughs> uh -huh. you know? So you were and, thinking, Where And that was I? a bit of a culture class, because here I come with this bit of, bit of a Glasgow accent, and they're like, you what, dear boy? You know, they couldn't understand half mm -hmm. of what I was saying. So they, um, anyway, um, by third year, when I was really bored with it, I managed to um, end up doing some of the kind of subjects that I had uh, felt sorry that I had never had a chance to do. Mm -hmm. So I did some uh, first year subjects, uh, politics one, for example, where I had to go and write essays and mm -hmm. research, because mm -hmm. you don't do that no, kind this, of stuff yeah. in maths, you're proving theorems all day long. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I want to have a go at that. So I did, I completed my degree. The MBA, that wasn't because I wanted to get to like some super high bar qualification. It was actually, to be honest, I was going out with a girl mm -hmm. at university who was like one year below me. Uh -huh. So she still had a year to go. So, so I was tr trying to find any kind of ways for, whatsoever that I could stay there for another oh, year. Oh, for love, you did the MBA. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Sweet. So I got into that MBA course. That was a bit of an eye opener. I mean, they had 700 something applicants for 40 places. Wow. I don't know how I managed to get in because that's really intense, but I did. And um, that was a year where I met people that, I mean, all ages. Um, we had something like 19 nationalities in these 40 people mm -hmm. from age ranges from six fresh undergraduates like me, but mm -hmm. lots of people who are older, who, mm -hmm. who are working in the industry, who get sent to a place like that, go mm -hmm. and get the latest um, mm -hmm. techniques in marketing you know, and uh, accountancy and whatever. It's a, it's a multidisciplinary course. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they threw us in at the deep end. Um, I remember the week one, um, first day, in fact, Professor Simon Koch, he said, I'm going to set uh, an exercise for you all, a team exercise. There's going to be a lot of teamwork in this mm -hmm. course for you to get to know each other a little bit. So since there's 40 of you, I'm going to put you into um, six groups of seven. And that works perfectly because there's six fresh undergraduates. One is going to be in each group. Mm -hmm. And the, the exercise is the following. You've got three days to walk around the streets of Edinburgh, maybe for the first day, mm -hmm. and uh, determine where you would set up a restaurant. Uh -huh. And then... Um, I want you to sit down as a team and work out everything to do with that restaurant. How, what the theme is going to be, how it's going to work, what kind of stuff you need, all the provisions, supplies, mm -hmm. forward rolling financial mm -hmm. plans. And then on the third day, you're going to come back to this lecture theatre and the, the undergraduate, mm -hmm. the youngest member mm -hmm. of each team is going to stand up and present the project mm -hmm. and they have to speak for a minimum of 15 minutes. Okay. So, well, my God. Uh -huh. <laughs> you were like, wow. Yeah, I had to do that, you know, and um, I mean, I wasn't at all versed with public speaking mm -hmm. at that time. If there's one thing that course did, it, it made me improve much in that because mm -hmm. we had a lot of that stuff to do mm -hmm. during the year. Mm -hmm. But um, can you imagine standing up in front of these, um, well, 34 people because the other members of my team were mm -hmm. behind me mm -hmm. and um, they were just waiting for a chance to uh, annihilate me with questions yeah. like, you know, so how is it even possible that you will be in profit by... Mm -hmm by year two with these figures, whatever, you know. And how did you do? Really good, no? Uh, well, I don't know about really good, but okay. okay. Yeah, it, was, you, well, it, wasn't as bad. it wasn't as bad. I mean, after the first few minutes of standing mm -hmm. up there, you kind of start to relax. Mm -hmm. My mom taught me a really mm -hmm. good trick. She said, um, if you're speaking in public mm -hmm. uh, like that, try to aim your, um, your gaze just uh -huh. slightly above everybody's eye, eye level. Uh -huh. um, and as if you're looking at them, but you're not quite, because if you stop and st look at their faces, you can get Nervous. thrown off a cue, you know, uh -huh. so easily. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if you see somebody who's sympathetic or is even smiling, if, you, if you're at all capable of coming out with something that's slightly amusing, uh -huh. then every so often go back and focus on them, because that will uh -huh. help you to relax. That's a really great advice, in fact. Yeah, yeah? very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that in mind. Yeah. So I did that, and uh, then um, we both graduated at the same time, and I decided after a while that I was going to go traveling in India for a year because a friend of mine from university had gone out there, and um, instead of coming back when he, when he was running out of money, he'd managed to, mm -hmm. he wanted to stay there so much, he'd managed to acquire a job out there, which is almost unheard of. Mm -hmm. How did he do it? 
He got a job as the bookkeeper in an American Christian missionary school in the north of Pakistan, next door to India. Oh, wow. On the strength of an all level in statistics, he got to be there like doing their basic accounts. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, fairly desperate measures. So I went out to visit um, him because I thought, I actually wanted to come down to Spain and my plan was to do a, tr a travel through, um, come down to Spain, um, go across the north of Africa after a while and come back up through Italy and end up back in Edinburgh. And by then maybe I would have decided what, what to, do to do with do. myself. But then when I heard that this friend, um, Ricky, his name was, was in um, Pakistan, which is next door to India, I, as I've always had a kind of idea, it would be pretty amazing to go traveling there. I thought, never going to get another opportunity like this. I don't think I would go to India on my own, not knowing mm -hmm. anybody, but just have a little base like that for a mm -hmm. few days. Why not? Uh, mm -hmm. So I wrote to him, um, uh, I mean, had to write in these days, I mean, we're talking about um, the 80s, so it was an airmail letter, oh, well, you know, on this proper, kind of thin blue mail. paper. Uh -huh. you, so you send and I have to wait like two weeks for his reply to come back, <laughs> and his reply was, don't even think twice, get your ass out here right now, you're, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. I'm bored, it's been a fantastic yeah. tough company. So he made me totally welcome and I, I, I went out there and I ended up traveling between India and Pakistan for nearly a year. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. And, and how did you like India and how was that experience? It was um, pretty fundamental in changing my life. I mean, first of all, I learned to calm down and be a lot more patient about things. I mean, I certainly for at least a Quite a few months after I came back, I mm -hmm. had, that, had that had a lasting effect mm -hmm. because out there it's a place where you, um, it, first of all, the, it, it's an in, fairly incessant heat in a lot of the areas, so it doesn't do to to get stressed out and worked up about mm -hmm. things going wrong or taking forever mm -hmm. to do because things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Spain is like a manana yeah. slow syndrome compared to our countries, Northern Europe, mm -hmm. India is like the same at least again or worse. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there were places where if you wanted to cash a traveler's check, which, which we were working with in these days, that could take a whole morning, walking mm. into some kind of oh archaic bank and presenting your traveler's check and then sitting down and waiting until you get called and two hours later or something like that. So yeah. if you need to become patient, go to India. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to meditate, you just wait. <laughs> well, <for> your... <laughs> even more so because, um, for example, the first time I got on, I was waiting in a bus in New Delhi with this big pack. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the more and more people were uh, congregating at the bus stop. You know, mm -hmm. I was thinking, is a bus ever coming here? Mm -hmm. Finally, a bus comes and everybody just, no order, you know, semblance of order, everybody just piles in. Whoa. I could hardly get there with you uh -huh. know, all the people and this big pack. Uh -huh. So I got on the bus and I was actually like, you know, somebody nearly knocked me over and started shouting or pretty, got at least a bit angry. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, everybody's like looking at me like, who's this idiot? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh -huh. and little kids are pointing, you know, like you. talking to their their parents, look, so, you know, they couldn't have, mira papi, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So, so yeah, you, um, you learn patience. I mean, when I came back to, I got back to London, like 10 or 11 months later, waiting at traffic lights, for example, um, seeing people completely stressed out, the mm -hmm. light goes, uh, I'm waiting to cross and all the traffic's there, the light goes to green and because the car in front doesn't move immediately the guy behind is like <laughs> nervous you know yeah. hammering his horn and i'm, I'm just yeah. standing and looking at him going why you're just killing yourself you're just filling your body with you know toxins you know and mm. you know people that are so caught up in that mm. so yeah they, um it's, it was a great experience but that was the end of my relationship unfortunately because that girlfriend didn't want to after okay, staying yeah. at university for a year with it she mm -hmm. didn't feel like going to this she wanted to do other things mm -hmm. so i came back um uh, I came back looking pretty unorthodox as well because I mean I went out there with super short hair mm -hmm. and I decided okay I'm just going to let my hair grow and, um, and I'm not going to shave either it's going to be easier that way so can you imagine what I was looking like when it's I came back close. <laughs> <laughs> so looking so so extreme in fact that they stopped me at the customs and they kept me for 24 hours because really? they were sure I must be some kind of wow. guy uh, running drugs or having drugs concealed internally mm -hmm. or something like oh my that God. yeah yeah. Crazy. So, and I'm sitting there going after about four hours, you know, let me out of here, and you know, you've already searched me. And meanwhile, guys are walking through with a briefcase full of cocaine or something with a suit and tie on, and, yeah. and, and you, you pick them, even... you pick someone you think is the most obvious example. Yeah. 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 But I guess they're just doing their jobs. But anyway, I think it's a great advice for people and youngsters if they don't know what to do after university or even you know, you don't need to go to university if you're not sure, and just go and travel. No, I think you learn so many valuable well, lessons. Well, I've always had an issue about working for other people and, and being, uh, you know, under, mm -hmm. and, and that's why I've ended up 
being my own boss down here. Mm -hmm. But when I came back from India, I was so far removed from even further from mm -hmm. going into that typical mm -hmm. uh, rat race work environment. You know, suit tie, 48 weeks of mm -hmm. the year, four weeks holiday. You've been out of the system already. I ended, I was at a loss of what to do. And I was in a bar in Edinburgh one night uh, quite soon after that. Mm -hmm. talk and in Edinburgh you go to bars in the city centre and it's not like probably lots of other places in the UK even the locals are fairly cultured mm -hmm. and if you go into a bar waiting to meet your friends for example mm -hmm. and you get there early by the time they turn up you'll be in some enrapturing conversation with someone who's just mm -hmm. it happens to mm -hmm. uh, are you okay you know and then before you know it, you're in yeah. That's like Spain. Yeah, 20 minutes later talking away. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a guy and I was telling him my dilemma and he goes well, if you don't want to do anything like um, totally orthodox, maybe you could do something like what I do. And I said, what's that? It turned out he was a guy who'd been a student and um, he was working as a self-employed gardener. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. He said, do you know anything about gardening? I said, well, what is it to know? He said, come on, I mean, you have to know how to like cut grass, you know, prune trees properly. I said, well, yeah, basics. I've done gardening work in my parents' garden, but why? Uh, he said, because it's like this, this is a city um, and on the outskirts of the city there are many, many big um, areas with um, plush villas owned by elderly women who don't have husbands anymore because women tend to live a bit longer than mm -hmm. us guys and um, they need their gardens tended and the worst thing for them is to have that typical uh, guy coming in to do the garden mm -hmm. who's like, who they can't even relate to at mm -hmm. all and they're worried mm -hmm. about and they don't feel comfortable yeah. with. Yeah, so I'm like you, I, I, I was a student and I'm doing this and I might even end up starting my own landscaping business because it's mm -hmm. going so well. Mm -hmm. He said, how did you get started? He said, I just put an advert in the, there's two newspapers in Edinburgh, there's a kind of posh one, The Scotsman, mm -hmm. um, put it in there and an advert student does, uh, call yourself a student or ex-student, however you like, uh, does all kinds of gardening work, something like honest, reliable, hard worker. Mm -hmm. That's all you'll need and I'll bet you'll work. Uh -huh. so I thought about this for a day or two. Am I ready to do that? Okay, I'll give it a go. Yeah, I got maybe half a dozen calls. And to cut a long story short, I mm -hmm. did that for a year and a half. Wow. And I was actually um, managing about 10 or 12 old ladies' gardens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they loved me. Uh -huh. you know, they, they were like, you know, inviting me in for tea and biscuits about every two hours mm -hmm. so they could have a chat. <laughs> uh <-huh. you> know? <laughs> it's a nice job then. And I, I'm a really tidy person. So uh -huh. when I finished their garden, it was like, Posted stamp perfect. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, wow, it's so good, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, then they would recommend me to other people. So it was. But did you enjoy that? It or, was. Or I, I did thinking? actually. I got. I got incredibly fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the time I'd been doing it six months, mm -hmm. uh, I was in the best shape of my life. That's great. I mean, I could go out at night drinking with my friends mm -hmm. and drink mm -hmm. quite a lot of beers, and the next morning wake up and not even Fresh. feel the remotest iota of any problem mm -hmm. whatsoever, and be in mm -hmm. the garden again at eight eight thirty. That's the only problem is the weather. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a lot of rain even in, um, out of the winter season. Mm -hmm. So the key is to wear lots of different layers. I mean, if you, mm -hmm. if you try going with a big heavy jacket mm -hmm. and you take it off, then you get really cold. So you just have to um, Be smart attune you your temperature to uh, taking off some layers mm -hmm. or putting them back on mm -hmm. and also have a waterproof one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've even been working in the winter in cold oh gardens and, uh, wow. and, and also in rain as well. So, so. yeah. So you got mentally fit in uh, India and then actually fit doing gardening. And then what happened? What happened then I decided the um, I wasn't journey? happy with the weather in Edinburgh, uh -huh. especially because of that, that really opened my eyes to how uh, cold and damp um, and windy it is working mm -hmm. in these gardens mm -hmm. for a year and a half. So I determined I'm going to go back to my original plan and go down to Spain. And this time another friend from university was living in Porto Benus. Uh -huh. um, so I contacted him and he said, yeah, we are, I'm sharing with three other guys, a penthouse apartment, um, come down. So I, I made it down here and to visit him. Mm -hmm. I had enough money to get through. That was like 80, 86. That's yeah. the year I was born. Yeah, really? Oh, wow, so 38 years Yes. you've yeah. been here. Yes, incredibly. Yeah. Um, How so it was the end of 86 and um, I, th I had enough money saved up, which I thought was going to be good till about April, mm -hmm. thereabouts, and I, I, so I thought, I'm not going to do my original plan of going through Africa and Italy. Mm -hmm. I'll just go down to the south of Spain, maybe I'll go over to Italy, um, but this money should be good for, you know, four months. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. 
-hmm. because the guy I came to stay with, mm -hmm. he and his three friends were running um, the OPC teams of three timeshare resorts. Okay. So they were basically the managers of, you know what OPCs are? The ones uh, that uh, the guys and girls that go out on the streets to get people to go into the resorts to, to be toured mm -hmm. and they get commission mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their job wasn't to do that. Their job was to run the teams who did that. Mm -hmm. They were basically working for about an hour each day, meeting these teams, mm -hmm. mostly shouting at them to do their work better. Mm -hmm. And that was their work it. finished for the day. Wow. So life was like all afternoon, dossing around, playing frisbee on the beach, mm -hmm. you know, um, taking some sun, having lunch in the port, having dinner mm -hmm. in the port, because they were living in a, uh, a penthouse above Joe's Bar, which used to be one of the best bars mm -hmm. in Port of Venice. Mm -hmm. These days it was Joe's Bar and Comedia. I don't know if you've I'm heard of them. They were I've the heard, but where, where, what is there now? Uh, instead well, of I don't those know. Ones. I, no I, idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> I have to go and reminisce. I mean, I used to be out in the port a lot, but that was mm -hmm. a long time ago. So now you don't really go out much. <laughs> and um, no. no, I don't go out like that, clubbing mm -hmm. around. Yeah, I, mean, I go yeah. out for dinner. I, especially in my position, I'm invited to a huge number of mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm no, just, you can't I'm, attend no, them I've all. just seen you at a couple of years as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, and to cut. A bit of a long story mm -hmm. short, um, I started to realize my money was going to run out much earlier because mm -hmm. of this lucrative lifestyle. <laughs> because I, um, I, I didn't want to live off them. So anytime we went out, I would buy my own. Um, mm, if it was, if we were buying rounds of drinks, I would buy mm -hmm. around when it was my turn. I'd pay my own food. These guys were earning really well, um, mm -hmm. so money was no object for them. Mm -hmm. And it was easy come, easy go. Yeah. So. Uh, but, I, but what were the prices like compared to? Edinburgh and, and Puerto Banus, was it a lot more expensive than here or how, how well, did you feel? Well, Puerto Banus has always been quite, uh, I mean, they, they, I mean they, they were being paid crazy money for just, because they got commission on all the, the team's mm -hmm. um, efforts. Mm -hmm. They got overrider mm -hmm. commissions. Mm -hmm. So they were living well. So, and th that money was so easy for them. They didn't mm -hmm. care if they went and splashed out mm -hmm. and bang, you know, a, a dinner with steaks and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, starter and dessert or something, mm -hmm. things like that. For me, it was... Um, it was more than I was uh, expecting to, to spend, so I, I just saw my funds mm -hmm. going down like that. And it got to about February, and I realized, well, I got a problem here. I'm either going back to Scotland in about two weeks, mm -hmm. three weeks max, mm -hmm. or I'm going to have to try to find uh, some work. So I determined well, I, I, the last thing I want to do is go back in February because it's, um, it's still winter there. Yeah, the worst yeah. month to go back. Yeah, I mean, it's winter there till at least about April. so. I started looking for jobs and the jobs um, were really um, pretty thin on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're out of season, um, 87, yeah. I was being offered things like work in a timeshare resort, no, um, nightclub, restaurant, uh, bar, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. I went to some real estates, um, they said, do you speak any Spanish? And I said, well, un poquito. poquito. You know? And they said, well, come back and you, you seem like a nice guy, but come back in like six months when I'm... Um, when you, know, you when you speak a bit more Spanish, because mm. we need people that are um, a bit more bilingual than that. So it was hard to find a job back then, probably without Spanish. It was much more of a Spanish yeah. town, right? Uh, well, or yeah, but also um, it was a quiet time as well. I mean, they came into a boom through um, 88, 89, things picked up, but mm -hmm. it was kind of a little bit of a low period. and. Um, the qualifications I had didn't help either because if I told people, you know, mathematics, they were like... They were like, what are you doing here? Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. if I had studied, I don't know, uh, veterinary science or architecture mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. probably would have made a, quite a big difference, mm -hmm. but no. So uh, I was getting to the point of despair and then somebody told me there's a magazine in Marbella called mm -hmm. Marbella Today. Mm -hmm. Go and see. Uh, it's run by two women. Uh, go and see them and I said and try and get yourself a job I said yeah sounds great in principle uh, in sorry in theory but how, how is that going to be possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he said okay I'll tell you what to say I'm working in a real estate here how about telling them that my boss is already advertising in the top two magazines in Marbella mm -hmm. which are such and such and he's looking to expand his uh, uh, his, uh, his promotion so tell them that you can probably get an ad, a full page advert if they give you the job. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're only going to offer mm -hmm. you commission and really likely. Mm -hmm. So I thought, Why not? well, I don't know about that. He said, well, come on, it's nothing ventured, nothing gained. Mm -hmm. If you're not even able to do that much, then yeah. then what's the point? So I, yeah, okay, all right. 
So I phone up and I end up in front of these two women. They took a liking to me mm -hmm. and they decided that they were going to give me a, a shot, commission only. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they said they could give me a car because mm -hmm. they had a, a, a deal with some advertisers. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, so that was it, a, a car without air conditioning. <laughs> and you didn't have a car back then, I'm guessing, no? No, so, no. I so just, you were like, oh, so, this is so a nice no, the car, They said, you'll need a car to go uh -huh. around a bit. So, yeah. And they sent me a test. They said, they said you, uh, you have to go out for the, this was May. Um, I think it was for the July edition. You have to go and try to sell a map that we're going to have of Porto Minus. This was a magazine. It was stapled, so it opened naturally in the middle. Uh -huh. There's going to be a map of Porto Minus, and there's going to be 16 boxes around it. Like the main and, places. and they're all going to have a number and it's going to show on the map mm -hmm. where they are. And mm -hmm. so go and sell these boxes. They're 25,000 um, pesetas each. Which, which is, is in euros. Oh, what? not much. 225 euros or something like that. Okay. I mean, it wasn't much, but mm -hmm. this is a long time ago as mm -hmm. well. Prices will, will have still, got... actually, it's, it feels like actually quite a lot if you think it was such a long time ago. Yeah. So, so I basically went out there to try and do that. And uh, how did it go? It didn't go at all. I mean, the first whole day, I mean, I have to say, I was, um, I had long hair, mm -hmm. <laughs> I had black jeans, cowboy boots, and uh -huh. I had a sports bag over my arm. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I had my materials in. People were just like, sorry, busy, no, not mm -hmm. interested, uh, come back another time. Uh, just brush me off, brushing me mm -hmm. off everywhere. You didn't really look presentable enough for No, for I, th the I think I just, I just didn't have the, the kind the, of um, the, sales. the um, presence to to, to, to get them to stop for a minute and mm -hmm. take me seriously. Mm -hmm. And I was actually um, almost giving up. I gave it a second day and on the end of the second day I was in, um, visiting some Chinese restaurant and this mm -hmm. woman said to me, after I tried talking to her, she said, look, I'm a bit busy, what is it? And, and she was, are you Scottish by the way? I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I am actually. She goes, well, what kind of a joke accent? She had a much stronger accent. Uh -huh. What kind of a joke accent is that? So I said, well, my accent kind of got worn down a long time ago by traveling, by being in this course, you know, where nobody could understand me and, and other things. She goes, okay, so what is this? So I explained it to her and she goes, well, okay, that doesn't sound so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so how many have you sold? Uh -huh. you know, 16 of them. Uh -huh. I said, well, I've got um, two or three promised here. You know, mm -hmm. No, I you asked, how many are sold? sold. Zero. So I said, well, okay, um, none of them are sold so far. Um, mm -hmm. She goes, well, I'm not surprised the, the way you the so kind of leisurely strolled in here and, mm -hmm. and, and started talking to me mm -hmm. about it. You know, you've got to be a bit more like Assertive slick. And, you know. and, yeah. um, so she said, oh, she really helped me out. She said, I'll tell you what, I will take one uh, and, and you go and see my friend who runs such and such and tell her I'm taking one and she'll take one, mm -hmm. but I'm only going to end up agreeing to do it if you sell the majority of them. I don't want it just to be like, you know, a yeah. washout with only like a few of them sold. So and this young 20, uh, mid twenties guy going around trying to do this. And, uh, and eventually um, I got home that night and I thought about what she told me. And I said, uh, and I went to bed and I fell asleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and I cold sweat realizing, well, wow, you're actually, this is your last chance. If you don't do this properly or, yeah. be or well, you can home. forget it. You're going to be back in Scotland and then you're going to have to like, think of something else to do again. So I thought it's uh, now or never. Yeah. So I just woke up and I went in there and you wouldn't believe that I went, I was walking into place like mm -hmm. going, okay, you got one minute to listen to this. Otherwise you're seriously going to regret it when you find out what you missed out on wow. stuff like wanna... that. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. I don't know. It was something along these lines, but mm -hmm. it, you know, and people started listening and mm -hmm. before, um, uh, I knew it, I was getting agreements and agreements. Mm -hmm. Uh, I ended up back in the office of these two women about five days later, and they were like, so how was that? Uh, uh -huh. Really tough exercise, huh? I like, said, yeah, really tough, you know. I don't ever want to do that again. Said, yeah, well, I'm not surprised. And I said, you know what? Um, I cannot get um, the last one on the bottom left-hand corner, but all the rest are sold. And they were just like, uh. <laughs> no, no way. No way. Wow. I said, yeah, yeah, and I started pulling out of the sports bag, all these contracts, bits of artwork, oh you know, God. payments, you know. Well, they were, they were just been... blown away. They said, well. we set this test twice before, and nobody even did more than like three. And well. you did 15? I said, yeah, but I'm really pissed off. I can't get this last one. You know, <laughs> no, calm down, calm down. Uh -huh. We can just put some little you know, something Thanks. down there, you know, mm -hmm. like. Um, so they, for, because, of that, because of that, they gave me the job. Obviously. They said, the job is yours. And then about two weeks later, the guy who was the actual sales manager of that magazine, 
uh, who you know, um, uh, Steve Cameron. Yes. <laughs> Steve Cameron <laughs> was the sales manager of that magazine. And he left because and the biggest magazine at that time called Look At offered mm -hmm. him a job. Mm -hmm. And he had three little boys. Um, the youngest one was just a baby. So he really needed the stability. So he, he even though he, he these um, two women, he mm -hmm. felt a great loyalty to them. He was really, um, it, it was too much of a pressure for him having a young family and mm -hmm. things were not very stable. He, he mm -hmm. said, I'm really sorry, really, but I'm going to have to accept this as a once uh, in a lifetime mm -hmm. opportunity. It's the top magazine here. And what's more, it was a magazine that had been going for like more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. So it was really mm -hmm. established. Whereas this one he was working on was like a year old. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Steve is my ex-father-in-law. Uh, so this is how small my <laughs> Maya is actually. You always yeah. find connections. But yeah, it's how, how crazy that you were, you know, already. Well, that's when I first met Steve. And he said to me, um, you are, uh, you're very good for this job. Um, and just uh, do your best. They're, they're a good woman to work for, etc." And within about two weeks of him leaving, they mm -hmm. surprised me. They, one day I w went to the office, which was in, um, in the center of Marbella, and uh, Alonso de Bazan, it was Edificio Diplomatico, five floors mm -hmm. up. And they said, we want you to be the, the sales, we want you to replace Steve as the sales manager. I said, whoa, whoa, hold on. Mm -hmm. There's two other guys working here who have been working in sales uh, a, a lot longer. longer than I have. Yeah, yeah, but they don't want the responsibility. Mm -hmm. They like lose a paper, five minutes after they, we give it to them. <laughs> they can sell, but their organization mm -hmm. is, is a, a washer. You're able to sell and you're organized. So if you want the job, it's yours. I said, I still don't uh, think it's fair. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't want to have someone promoted over me if I was one of them. No, no, we already talked with them and they're, they're cool with it. They're, they're, they're okay. So I became sales manager of that magazine. And that magazine went up a lot um, after that, mm -hmm. probably with my help, but in any way, because the mm -hmm. cost, as I said, started to go on a, an upward moving um, um, proje projectile kind of direction. And then I ended up working in many other magazines for, for the, over the next um, years, so always a sales manager, mm -hmm. until I finally got to the point of deciding Same. that I've, I can I, do it I, myself. Yeah, I've been making lots of money for lots of other mm -hmm. people and lots of these exercises have ended up mm -hmm. with problems, um, going out of business overnight, mm -hmm. me losing money and always through no fault of my own. So mm -hmm. I've had enough. I'm going to, I'm going to. So with that 12 year training, I launched Essential. Oh. So, <clears throat> but you enjoyed actually, did you enjoy the selling work? Did you enjoy that? No. Or it was more just like. I don't I, know. I seem to. Oh. Uh, or it was just more like. I have to do it you were just like determined to be the best or what was it that you liked so much about I, working? I seem to have a nice way of establishing a rapport with people mm -hmm. I mean I used to go and visit clients who were prospective clients who mm -hmm. and I, I they didn't know me at all I wouldn't even have a, a meeting with them mm -hmm. and I'd walk in and say I'm a bit busy at the moment oh, mm -hmm. if you just have a couple of minutes uh, I'm the sales manager of this magazine okay sit for five minutes and then and I, they would end up um, liking me and they would end up um, always being advertisers ultimately mm -hmm. because I would keep meticulous notes of every single contact I had with people. Mm -hmm. So I'd typically be on the phone five months later. Yes, Mr. Thompson, do you remember we were talking uh, in the meeting and uh, oh, by the way, how's your son doing? He was just going mm -hmm. to university when, you, when, you, you know, when we were talking. How's that going? You know, and we would have a little chat and, and so it, I, think, I, I think they kind of felt um, well, this guy's offering really good options and he's a super nice guy. So ultimately, um, there was a kind of subtle pressure there. Why mm -hmm. not do yeah. it? It's not like it's, he's offering us something that's a waste of time. So, mm -hmm. and he's, in, he, and he's, he's really um, reliable and um, seems to be professional. So mm -hmm. let's do image. it. Yeah. And when I launched this... Um, then everyone already knew you, probably. Yes, it and must they, have been well, so I was, easy. I was working at Absolute Marbella. Mm -hmm. Do you ever? Yeah, I've heard of so that. So I, I was working there, and I actually had to leave there because they changed the ownership for the third time. Mm -hmm. And the two new owners that we got there were, well, let's just say within a few months after I left, they were both in prison for, oh. different, for different reasons. Wow, so that's, that's the kind of bosses I ended up with there. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so I ended up um, leaving and starting... Um, essential and so of course we were there and they were up there but mm -hmm. over the next years um, mm -hmm. we caught them up in 2004 we caught them up and overtook them and they stopped printing in 2008 um, mm -hmm. and we've been and the leading lifestyle magazine actually since 2004 which is 20 years ago yeah and but you've been doing this 25 years now 
essentially yes. is now yeah. 25 years old, which is... Yeah, we launched in 99. It did take five years to, to overtake them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to uh, uh, get the Absolute Marbella when it came out, and it would be like coming out anywhere up to the 10th of the month. They were mm -hmm. so lackadaisical, they didn't really care when they came out. Mm -hmm. We rolled out religiously mm -hmm. on the first, which mm -hmm. you should be if mm -hmm. it's a monthly magazine. Yeah. So I'd have to wait ages to get their magazine, then I'd be going through it and getting uh, disheartened because there would be um, advertisers in there who told me they weren't doing anything at mm -hmm. all for a mm -hmm. few months, and yet they just mm -hmm. they, they didn't tell me the truth and mm -hmm. things like that. But eventually um, we, we caught them up, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then we, we just carried on getting bigger and, and they, they carried on going the opposite way. But what do you think is like the key or like the secret to your success? Why has it been so successful? 25 years of a magazine in Marbella, is, you don't really have a competition, it's, do you? It's true. It's very hard to be top of the market in a market like this, which is pretty fickle. For mm -hmm. 20, We've been top of the market we, 25 years, but 20 of these, we've been the top, top magazine. I think it's a combination of um, several things. One, the quality of the product, and I mean there the editorial, because a magazine primarily is something to mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. It's for entertainment and um, diversion. Mm -hmm. So it should be, it should strike a chord with readers of all age ranges, sex, mm -hmm. uh, male, mm -hmm. female, even nationality. So we strive really hard to make this magazine something that people, even if they stumble across it and they start, they'll, 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 they'll find something. Yeah, no? they'll, they won't just be finished in mm -hmm. a few minutes, mm -hmm. like with mm -hmm. lots of the other magazines, I have to say, you're just flicking because mm -hmm. there's nothing really of much um, context. Yeah. So it's quality. Then it's um, also the quality of the print and the design, so which we we spend a lot on. So, I mean, at, at times we've had this magazine in all the top hotels in the rooms of mm -hmm. the top hotels on the coast, mm -hmm. including Puente Hermano, Marbella Club, Cortesine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have a super quality product for, for that to be accepted. Then it's um, our distribution policy and our the numbers of copies we put out is mm -hmm. way uh, I mean, how, how many copies do you we, print We print um, 20,000 copies. Um, we print it up to 25,000. On really, very slow months, we print like maybe 15,000 copies, like January, the kind of months mm -hmm. when there's not so many people mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. But it's probably an average of about 20. I don't know another magazine that does even more than about five to 8,000. And some of these are even bi-monthly. So that's what they're doing to cover mm -hmm. two months. So it's yeah. totally different. So I guess the advertisers... Um, it starts to work for them and it, it must be the case because if you look at uh, this magazine, if you came to my office, for example, mm -hmm. and you're sitting in my office, you'd see there's a big bookshelf there with uh, the spines of all the copies from the beginning. All mm -hmm. of them. Wow. And we're going to be um, th on issue 300 in November. That's so there's a lot of magazines there. And if you said, oh, can I have a look at some old copies? And if you picked up a copy, I don't know, 10 years ago, for example, 2014, mm -hmm. you would see a lot of the same advertisers. Wow. So they stayed with you for... It's really super loyal. I mean, mm -hmm. people, especially the property ones, which we've become, like, we are the, the signature mean? property magazine. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mm -hmm. go-to mm -hmm. for all, all the new developments mm -hmm. are in here, mm -hmm. like Sky Marbella mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and so on. They, they just took a new contract for six months after a trial contract for three months. Mm -hmm. um, and... So we actually don't need a really active sales team because 70 to 80% mm -hmm. of our clients are long-term constant clients. That's like wow. that's huge, amazing. yeah, huge that's cornerstone of the success. That's amazing. Um, but it's also um, having the reputation of being super professional, never letting anyone down, being 100% reliable. Mm -hmm. And when I went to sell the clients into the first edition of this, I left it a bit late because it took a while for the sales um, materials to be ready. Mm -hmm. This was way back in March um, 99 to bring for the May edition. And I have to say that um, I, I woke up in the middle of the night sweating because I, I had a target to sell 30 pages of advertising. Which, and absolutely, I used to sell like 70 pages of advertising mm -hmm. or even more. So I was thinking 30 can do it in like a, a week. Uh -huh. And then I suddenly woke up thinking, yeah, but this is a totally new concept. But if everybody mm -hmm. tells me, no, sorry, let's wait uh, mm -hmm. until we see, you know, uh, um, how, it, how it is for, uh, for a few months, then we'll make a mm -hmm. decision and um, we're screwed. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Everybody I went to, their attitude was more like, if you're doing it, Ian, we're on board. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that it's going to be good. So, and they were, they were already fighting for what positions they could have pre-launch. Well, pre that's amazing. Yeah. But I think I, when I first came to Marbella, I was also working for an online magazine, as you know, and I also had to go and sell advertising. <laughs> <laughs> And, but I quickly learned from the woman that I came here with that actually 
I'm not really good at selling. I wasn't really, I was quite shy. I was not really good at talking to people like you, probably going in the first places like you went. No, I'm not really sure yeah. what you're doing, this and yeah. that. But I quickly realized at least that you are not really selling. I mean, you are selling the product. You have to be sure what it is and know about it. But you are selling yourself in the end. Like you said, if they liked you, they yeah. bought it. Yeah. And I really also realized the same. If you're reliable, you're hardworking, you show up, you, you do as you say, then this is the easiest way to kind of sell. Isn't it? Y yes, totally. I mean, that's these are com completely uh, the professional ethics. Mm -hmm. But I had one big duck when I launched this, if and that was is Marbella a normal market, um, like it would mm -hmm. be in Sweden or Scotland or Germany, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, there you do things better than everyone else, more professionally than everyone else. Of course, you're going to end up being the the leading um, um, member of whatever business you're mm -hmm. involved in. But here. At times, uh, there's a lot of it's um, who you know rather than what you know that counts. So I had my doubts mm -hmm. whether we would still overtake Absolute mm -hmm. and still be the, the number one magazine by doing everything better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. But in the end, actually, it was quite an eye opener because by doing it like that, we still did manage to overtake them and we still did. So it, was, it operates see. normal enough, um, uh, as you can see. Yeah, you must be really proud. How do you feel like? going into the 25th year. You feel proud? Yeah. You feel... Yeah, this is something that, that you, you can't help having a pride in because it looks good. Um, the reputation is um, first, first rate. People yes. uh, um, only, you know, whenever it's a new client, they say, look, we're launching this property development and we see that all the property clients are in your magazine and we recommend it uh, mm -hmm. to talk to you. Uh, so what can you offer us? So, so I, mm -hmm. I mean, they're contacting us. Mm -hmm. and I, I, yeah. you don't I, need, so you don't have a sales team? No. <laughs> well, I used to have a sales team, but they kind of drifted away after the, um, nothing to the sell. pandemic. <laughs> uh -huh. so, because, How was the uh, pandemic? Was that a hard time? Yeah. yeah. That must have I been mean, we've had two big downturns, the pandemic and the and, and, financial crisis. And at those times, did you ever think about closing? Were you like that close to Not closing? Not thinking of closing, or? but we got close to almost being out of business, especially during the the financial crisis because that was i mean the pandemic was going down much faster but shorter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was pro protracted and prolonged mm -hmm. i mean we got down to about our last 50k in the bank mm -hmm. um after you know just not there were basically no advertisers mm -hmm. you know they were yeah. down to like a trickle and yet you still have to pay for printing mm -hmm. team offices you know many associated costs so basically all the money we had made during the previously buoyant years was just going down like that. Mm -hmm. That was a bit mm -hmm. soul destroying to, mm -hmm. to see that, especially it's like out of our hands that, you mm -hmm. know, it's something that's happening on an international basis, not, mm -hmm. not something just locally. But you kept going and what made you kept keep on going? Because you could have easily just gone. Well, the, gone the desire just not to have done all that work and <laughs> put in all that blood, sweat and tears just to end up with nothing. So, but no I mean, one knew how long it was going to take. You just thought, OK, I'm just going to Well, when it got it down out. to about the very bottom level mm -hmm. um, and I was actually thinking and we we're going to have to go to the bank and ask them for a loan, mm -hmm. then s finally Thanks. just it started to turn the corner and just yeah. started to slowly go back up. Amazing. And then and we're, yeah, and, and then, then we're rebuilding again after yeah. that. For and, and how has the digital marketing affected your business? That's a really good question. And actually that ties in uh, totally with what we're just talking about because um, when we had the pandemic, mm -hmm. at that point we did have a digital version of the magazine, mm -hmm. but digital was really backwards here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It still is, but mm -hmm. it's caught up quite a bit. And it's caught up, if you ask me, a lot to do with the pandemic mm -hmm. because when everybody was at home, not being able to do their normal work, mm -hmm. they all had to work digitally. Mm -hmm. So if suddenly everybody was zooming each other yeah, in meetings, yeah. you know, and yeah. and then all the real estates were finding tools to to uh, you know still sell properties via videos and mm -hmm. so on. And mm -hmm. so all that digital platform really took off. Mm -hmm. The same for us. I mean, our digital magazine pre-pandemic was a total replica mm -hmm. of the print magazine, mm -hmm. maybe just a few more pages because mm -hmm. we had a bigger mm -hmm. font. During um, that pandemic, when we had to found ourselves at home and we had to still pay our team and our mm -hmm. offices and everything, and we didn't get any help from the government whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my wife, uh, Andrea, who's, who's in charge of the whole um, design side of the business, she started looking into things and um, basically she came up with these uh, you know, ways of making the, the, the online edition totally interactive. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you go on our website now and you mm -hmm. go into the digital edition, when you open in any spread, things light up, and if you touch them, wow. these it takes you into the website mm -hmm. of the client or the email. Mm -hmm. um, 
And not only that, there's videos, mm -hmm. uh, QR codes which mm -hmm. work and mm -hmm. logos. It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, when, it, when it was finally all achieved, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is a different world. Mm -hmm. And then you can also track. I mean, I think that's what a lot of businesses like, that you can really track the digital marketing results. Now you can see how many clicks, you can see, you know, who's... Well, that works to a, to a certain extent. I mean, mm -hmm. let's say you're a real estate and you have a, a double page in here and you've got properties with QR codes. You can mm -hmm. see how many people looked at the property. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't tell you um, whether they're to what level of interest they have, mm -hmm. and it doesn't tell you the other side of the people who have got nice villas who want to mm -hmm. sell them and are thinking, mm -hmm. where will they mm -hmm. put it? Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, we should put it in essential because that's where the, the property goes. So, mm -hmm. so if they just made decisions purely alone on the QR code, it wouldn't be there. But it's, but of mm -hmm. course it is. I mean, if there's no nobody looking at it at all, that's a different matter. Mm -hmm. And what do you see as the future of Essential then? What are your plans for the future? Or you're not thinking <laughs> what's next? You just Well, I don't think I, I don't think slow. personally I can do another twenty five years myself because <laughs> I'll never, probably never be know. retired before then. <laughs> are you my, planning on retiring? Not yet. My I've got two kids, mm -hmm. uh, they're both at university. My son is like I mentioned, he's doing computer science and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. at Nottingham, but he's now doing a year in industry placement in Edinburgh which he managed to acquire, then he has to go back and do his final year in Nottingham. So he finishes uh, not next summer, summer 2026. And my daughter's doing psychology at Greenwich and she finishes the same, the same year because her course is like, one year shorter. So maybe um, sometime after that, uh, in the next five years or something, it would be good to um, maybe not retire, but wind down and have some other people do. But your children are not interested in taking over? I business. think my son will be some kind of high-flying guy in the industry um, of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and probably will be massively out-earning me by the time he's <laughs> 25. You know? So I can see that even if I said, look, there's a whole business here for you, mm -hmm. he'd be like, yeah, thanks, uh, but no thanks. I saw mm -hmm. how hard it was, the work you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, can make money easier. Easy, easier. But have you had, uh, surely you have people approaching to buy the magazine or you haven't had any good offers? Uh, no, but th that's probably because people don't um, imagine that it's for sale. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and it's not actually, but I guess there's an old maxim that uh, everything's for sale for the yeah. right price. Yeah. yeah. So, so you never uh, know if someone's really interested. <laughs> I can imagine a lot of people in Marbella who've got plenty of money would easily be able to pay the, the purchase price of, of a product like this, mm -hmm. but then whether they would be able to run it effectively mm -hmm. is another thing. You yeah. need to have quite a lot of key skills. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's they not just... They would probably ask you to stay on board. That's the thing. <laughs> but, no, then I'd be back to being an employee but, again. No, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I'd be prepared to do something like um, a buyout over a, a period of time where I could mm -hmm. help them to, to learn all the things they need to know to do it well. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just the sales. Somebody has to plan what the content's going to mm -hmm. be, and then somebody also also has to get the peop the key mm -hmm. people to write mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. content. And as you said, you work with your wife. So you've been working with your wife since the beginning, or how did uh, you? Not the, since the did, beginning. We met in '97. Um, mm -hmm. The magazine was launched in '99. Basically, I, I asked her to come and work for us a year after we launched because I I, I just couldn't find people that were good enough to do. Um, things that I needed doing in the business. So I said to her one day, you want to come and work for, I mean, she's Hungarian, so mm -hmm. her, at that point, her English and Spanish were not anything like on the level they are now, especially her Spanish, but she's a whiz at languages. I mean, she's much better mm -hmm. than me. She, I mean, she's, she got into grips with Spanish very quickly. And um, we, we have ended up in, with roles, and although she started like me, I made mm -hmm. her go out and try to do some sales, and she uh -huh. did some pretty well in sales, but she didn't like it. She wasn't comfortable doing it. And she's, she didn't like um, the designers at that point because these were guys who were very, a uh, couple of macho guys in our mm -hmm. design department. So when she went into mm -hmm. with an, look, I sold this nice decor advert. It's beautiful. Can you, make a, can you make a really aesthetic advert with nice cream and beige tones or something? Yeah, yeah, leave it to us. And she would go back the next day to see what they designed. And she's like, God, what? Yeah. they mm -hmm. just don't have any taste. Mm -hmm. So she started doing designs herself. I was going to design my own adverts mm -hmm. and she very quickly got good at it and then she told me one day I want to um, I want to be in design I don't mm -hmm. want to do sales anymore mm -hmm. so we ended up um, getting to the perfect juncture so I do all the admin and sales and she does she takes care of all the mm -hmm. 
design and now all the digital. So, you know, the things that she's good at, mm -hmm. I'm not good at, and it's vice perfect, versa. Perfect yeah. combination. Yes. And, uh, but uh, how is it working with your wife? I mean, or you keep your private life totally separate from work or you do, do you do you just mix it all like you talk about work at home or isn't it hard to work with your wife? Uh, or is it, like you said, it's a good combination. You, you're yeah, in different I mean, parts really, of the business. Not really, because we, we, we're kind of each other's best friends. We have rules at, at home, like, you know, um, you can't over talk about work. Um, uh, you can't talk about work in the bedroom ever, for example. Mm -hmm. You can talk about work in, um, you know, at the office we have. Um, or when we're out having a dinner, you should keep it to a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, she's also got some qualities, like she's a person who um, doesn't hold grudges, which is a fantastic um, character trait to have. So whenever we do ever have any strong disagreements, for her, it's like half an hour later, it's like, She's so what, you know, it. it's like, okay, you've got your opinion, I've got mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've been in relationships before where people are still not talking three days later when mm -hmm. you've had some fallout because yeah. you just can't bring yourself to... But you don't probably even remember what it was, <laughs> but you yeah. still mad at and each and that's other. so destructive, you know. Yeah. So, Definitely. I mean, she was well-trained because she, her mom does split up when she was 13. Mm -hmm. Her mom actually left because her dad was really tough guy and really mm -hmm. difficult. So she ended up being there with her younger sister, who was um, nine. Mm -hmm. um, and so she kind of had to be a bit of a substitute mum for her sister because she mm -hmm. was only nine. And also she had to try to re-educate her dad all the way through her teens because he was putting his foot down everything. You know, you can't go out. No, you're mm -hmm. not. You've come back at this time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not allowed. Da, 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 da. So she, you know, and so that made her like mature much faster because we have a bit of an age between us. And when mm -hmm. we first met, mm -hmm. we, we had no idea about it. We thought we were more or less the same age. And what ages were you? I was... 37 and she was 22. Oh, oh. I thought she was about 27 and uh -huh. she thought I was about 28. Mm -hmm. Took the third date till we found oh. out and we were like, no way. Yeah, but that just shows really <laughs> age is nothing but a number. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, actually, when I took her back to Scotland to introduce her to my family, mm -hmm. um, my brother's um, wife who's like a really tough prosecuting lawyer for Strathclyde Police Force. She pulled me aside afterwards. She'd been sitting beside her at this dinner all night. She said, I don't know where you found her, but she's amazing. And it's like the best talk ever with her all night. You know, so mm. like, good luck on that relationship. Yeah, yeah. Keeper. Yeah. She's a keeper. So what do you, what is your advice for a long lasting marriage? Because clearly you have a okay. successful so, magazine and a successful well, relationship. Well, you need to find somebody that if, is, if possible, can be your each other's best friend. Mm -hmm. So you need to be completely open and honest with each other. And you need to have trust. You need to have fundamental. Is n forget jealousy, you just need to have implicit trust that that person is, is like into you the same as you're into them. And you know, it doesn't matter how many or whatever level of um, attractions or, or enticements are going on elsewhere, physically or otherwise, there you can rely on them and they can mm -hmm. rely on you. And but if more, you can manage to, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it took a long time for a... me to find that because I uh -huh. had, I, I, and I was looking, I've had lots of periods of my life where I've been, you know, having fun, you know, meeting mm -hmm. lots of girls in mm -hmm. you know, short time periods. But I had that relationship at university I mentioned, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. five years. I had an eight-year one when I came down here, which is part of the reason I also got stuck here with the, that first magazine. I met her um, about the same month I started working in that magazine. And then um, that fi we finally realized we weren't really right for each other and probably should have broken up a couple of years earlier. And um, But mm -hmm. it was a mutual ag agreement to separate. So then I'm like, 35 at that point and I started to realize well the next person that I get serious with is going to have to be more or less it because otherwise family uh, I don't, I don't want to be a 50 year old guy having kids uh, mm -hmm. um, so let's just hope I'm lucky so mm -hmm. and, and I was you, know? you just got lucky yeah with the right girl it's good yeah, because Maria doesn't have a lot of stories like that so it's uh it's a big yeah, accomplishment meeting, meeting people down here that's true and to meet somebody like that who we could even end up not just being good in a relationship but that we could even complement each other like mm -hmm. e each other in work like that yeah. just that's rare yeah really rare pretty amazing so how do you see marvea now how has it changed over 38 years like there must be such a drastic change yeah. well marvea's in, Mar in really good shape at the moment it's like got a huge reputation on the world stage mm -hmm. as a person as sorry as a place in europe that's really um uh high level for living and visiting um 
There's lots of new top-level businesses opening mm -hmm. here. There's lots of new hotels coming, even more than the ones we've already seen. The property market is still going pretty much um, fairly flat out. Uh, there, it does have some problems, uh, some infrastructural problems, like especially the roads. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's been talking about that. And now the water, which we're kind of very lucky this year with that mm -hmm. washout during mm -hmm. Semana Santa, where it didn't stop raining. I feel really sorry for everybody who came yeah. on holiday that week. But it always rains that week. Like, just don't come that week. Yeah, it's but like not, not like that. It pretty much yeah, it's it was, like a tap going yeah, the, the whole yeah. week. Yeah. But thank God, because... Uh, we needed yeah, it. Yeah. But what will happen in future years, because the mm -hmm. rainfall has been really low in the last few winters, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have to uh, start. I mean, probably they've finally woken up now, and they've, mm -hmm. I think they're putting the desalination plant back into action and maybe mm -hmm. planning some others. But they should have already had that. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. the authorities' level of um, forward planning is a bit um, mm -hmm. lacking, and the roads mm -hmm. is another one. I mean, every su every summer you're stuck in queues. You know. Um, yeah, let's hope they they do something about it. But yeah, and they they have to because um, I mean it's attracting really high level people. Even the American markets open mm -hmm. up now, and mm -hmm. apparently that's bringing a lot of revenue in into mm -hmm. this area. But um, yeah. Uh, it will ultimately backfire if, if, if these things, I mean, can you imagine what would have happened this year if people had arrived at Marbella Club or Pointe Romana and got told at reception, um, okay, nice, uh, we're checking you in now, but just one thing, uh, we only have water from eight till nine in the morning uh, yeah. and the swimming pools are closed. I'm really sorry to tell you. Yeah. What? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like you come here and there's no sun, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, what has surprised you most about you know, Marbella. Did you ever think like Marbella is going to be what it is right now when you first came here? It must have been like a small town, you know, like just... It, you well, know, what yeah, had, I, I knew, it, I knew that it had potential is... to be like it is, but I really doubted whether it ever would be mm -hmm. because um, it's always been run by, you know, these local government officials mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. have, you know, at times have, have been running it it very ineffectively or even into the ground you know mm -hmm. i mean um, this famous you know this jesus hill kind of guy you know mm -hmm. and, and um, although he actually was quite good for marbella he kicked all the criminals out yeah, and he did and some good things too. increased the police force beautified the town uh, that's a bit what like what's going on with estepona at the moment estepona is amazing trans, yeah. trans, um, transformation yeah yeah so oh, beautiful so yeah um i think it's got um huge potential um it's still got parts of land that could still be developed. I, I wouldn't like it to end up being several times more the level of population than there is now, though, mm -hmm. because it's just... It would, it's it can't handle it. Well, how can you take a, a, a two-lane highway and make it into a four-lane? Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't no. start knocking down no. all the buildings on either side. No. Then we're gonna... I mean, they, they might be able to do something. It's ludicrous that you have to pay to go on the motorway. Mm -hmm. um, and what's more, in summer, you have to pay double and, and summer is not even July, August. It's no, 1st no. of June till 30th September. That's yeah. daylight, yeah. complete yeah. rip-off robbery. And that should be, it should be the opposite. It should be half price. I bet you they would even make more money if it was half price yeah. um, because people would be like, okay, I don't have to get stuck down there anymore. But, but people just can't afford to pay that um, mm -hmm. or they're not prepared to. Yeah, it's rising every year. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about Marbella. What do you do on your free time? So when you finish in the office, huh. what do you do? Or how does your day look like? All right. Well, these days I work from home, maybe two or three days a week. And the other days I go to the office when I have meetings mm -hmm. and things to do, because I also set up a pretty effective office during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, if I go downstairs in my pajamas or shorts, mm -hmm. I, um, I can already have like a lot of work done in the same time that it would take me to get ready, mm -hmm. dressed, drive to Marbella, park. Mm -hmm. Parking can be quite uh, difficult and then walk mm -hmm. to my office. That's already like a whole hour of work mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and but the same coming done. back. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus, you so, have a lot of distractions in the office. People probably start talking oh, to you, asking no. things. So, well, no, the our no? office is fairly quiet, but uh -huh. yeah. Um, so, what do I do? Um, probably most of my social life is a bit of socializing with friends, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it is actually work related. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, I'm going to. Uh, tonight, I'm going to an event at Pedro Peña, some press um, visit for some new concept. They want, they want this big hush-hush. We don't know what it is till we get there, uh -huh. 7 o'clock. Interesting. And then I got, I got invited to, have you heard of this new Zengo? Yes. So In the new the uh, the manager there, Christina, mm -hmm. uh, who I've known from other restaurants. She just contacted me yesterday. 
We'd love to invite you plus one person uh, tomorrow. Are you free? So I, well, actually, tomorrow's good because I have to an event to go to at seven. So I could come after that. So you don't need to make any plans. You just get invitation. You yeah. just have to pick. You're yeah. like the local celebrity. Like they, they want you <laughs> in the event. Kind of, because um, a couple of our clients as well insist on um, that I go there to dine every year. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I, if I don't show my face there during the whole of the year, mm -hmm. they get a little bit disappointed. Absolutely. It's like, well, we never see you anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, well, yeah, because you know, this, how many times do I actually go out for dinner, which are not um, uh, work events, where, mm -hmm. it's, where it's my own choice, where I'm deciding to go with my mm -hmm. wife or whatever? Mm -hmm. Very but, few. And, and then I've got a list of about 15 or 20 restaurants that well, I, should make a, I should make a point of going to one of these some uh -huh. points sometime soon. It's just not possible. Yeah. To, okay, but, okay, we get it. Yeah. But what are your favorite restaurants? Just name a few favorite places that you have <coughs> that are, they don't have to be clients. They're just really that, that you're few favorites and then the rest of them I'm gonna put in my blog and people can check check your private list well um, where can I, we find you in dining I like to go to um, boho club uh -huh. I like to I kind of like going to ocean club but not so much um, because of the atmosphere of being there, it's kind of surreal, you know, just mm -hmm. that like it's sort of like a kind of rarefied atmosphere with that big bass mm -hmm. beat going in the background mm -hmm. But it's usually very hot there and so I'm busy there in the summer. Um, yeah, well, you put me on the spot with that. Italian restaurants. Or maybe for breakfast. No, I practically don't no. eat breakfast. So you no. never, you'll never be in I a... have, um, I, for a while I was doing intermittent fasting. Uh -huh. you, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I did, I, I, for me it was better to have lunch at two, which was my first meal of the day, mm -hmm. and then early dinner and then not eat at all during mm -hmm. the, the, the rest of the... And I've always been quite light on breakfast, so and with Me intermittent too. fasting, you can still drink uh, herbal tea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't drink coffee anyway, so anytime I get hungry around midday, I just go and have a nice cup of herbal tea or a big glass of water. So you're quite healthy then. Your your lifestyle is quite healthy, would you say? Or or did you a, a do your A lot healthier party? than it used to be. I so used to do a lot more partying, a lot uh -huh. more um, alcohol consumption, uh -huh. um, and I try to watch a little bit now what I eat because um, before. I've always been super lean, so I had this constitution that, especially in my student days, I, even if I ate three main courses, mm -hmm. it wouldn't put, I wouldn't put a gram on, you know? Lucky you. <laughs> Tell that to any woman. And, <laughs> so. uh, but um, I wanted to ask about what advice would you give to someone who is coming to Marbella now and is thinking of starting a business, whether it's a magazine or whatever, restaurant or whatever, and they don't, let's say, have the Spanish language, what would you say? Or would you say, don't come now, we're oversaturated, this is too much going on. What, what, what would be your best advice for uh, someone? Well, I think there are always um, niche um, possibilities for, for businesses, what? depending on the type of business. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything can be done from a slightly different angle. Mm -hmm. you know? There, there's nuances of subtlety involved. It's the same in conversation. Like mm -hmm. I, I guess when you're selling someone something, the way you talk to them is mm -hmm. part of it um, as well, um, to steer their mind towards making the right kind of decision without them perhaps even being, being aware of it. Mm -hmm. So I think there are, there are, there are always niche um, possibilities for businesses. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to open one, you would have to research really well and probably take advice. And if your Spanish isn't good, I would advise you to get some kind of key, um, maybe not partner if you don't want to partner up with someone, but at least a key um, manager or mm -hmm. you know someone in the business that you can depend on who's, who knows their way about mm -hmm. a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But it would probably have to be a business that's, that's either got a reputation elsewhere or it's something that would be uniquely appealing to people that would um, immediately start to, to take off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's still possible. I mean, look at this Florentine next door. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's that's become a real um, uh, popular restaurant yeah. and, and yeah. they have a restaurant in Stockholm, but how many people out of being Swedish know, knew about that? Uh, okay, they opened in a good place as well, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just kind of, uh, yeah. no. so maybe Zengo is going to be the same. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but what do you think there is still missing in Marbella? Is there anything? Yeah, that you it, think it's still missing? pretty low on culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I coming agree. from a city like Edinburgh, mm -hmm. I mean, once when in my uh, one of the summers uh, when I was a student and I had a student uh, card, I went to on the fringe. I think I went to something like a hundred productions because I, mm -hmm. I managed to work out about up to eight a day that I could go and see. Mm -hmm. uh, so I used to go and watch all these theatrical things, uh, cinema as well. I used to go to a cinema in Edinburgh where they showed all the 
classic films of Truffaut and Goddard and all these kind of people. Um, I mean, there's nothing like that no. down here. Um, and I don't know why they don't do an open air cinema with all the sunshine and the good weather we have. Well, there is one in Malaga, but I don't know if it's yeah. still going. They just I, opened it last year, but yeah. it's a bit of a distance to go. Yeah, and I think they were showing movies only in Spanish. Yeah, probably. So that's like, that, that's a niche. Somewhere. I mean, there are cinemas. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a bit of that, but that's, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. that's, that's uh, verging on culture. What, what about, um, and there are some museums now as well and art galleries. Um, and I, I, okay, there's, there's, there's a good sport um, offering of golf, tennis, you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of water sports and so on. But there could be, could be um, a bit more of dynamic um, culture where um, people could put on events, you know, mm -hmm. and interested people could get together and go to them. So, yeah. so if you have any good ideas, come and do them. Marbella is still open for these things. But do you have any last words, any interesting stories you, you haven't told us? And I mean, we could talk for hours. Probably. Maybe we have to do a volume two. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if there's something else you want to share before we wrap up? Uh, not really. I think we've covered a lot. Yeah. I'd just like to say that it's been very nice to have this chat with you. And thank yeah, you me too. very, very much very for thinking of me. And um, I'm and, honored to have you. And, and having the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about what's yeah. become the... You know, the labor of love for, yeah, for me and, and so for yeah. Andrea, my wife. Yeah, so you really, if you haven't picked up the latest copy, here it is, and the new one is coming yeah, out. Yeah, next Tuesday, we're out on the first. Next so. Tuesday, so, so yeah, you can find these It's almost. got a local girl on the cover next month. Really? Beautiful girl, you might know her. Do I you, was, know, do you no. know Hannah of La Flori? No, I'm not sure. Maybe if I see her photo, I will know, but I will. She I will has a business check. which are plants which are um, I Hannah. wouldn't like to say artificial plants, uh, but she's Estonian. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. I know she's her. very yeah, uh, striking, she's, very pretty. Yeah, she's so extra we're doing an article on her beautiful. business in October. Wow. And I said, "Wow, oh, you're so pretty. Would you be interested in being That's on the amazing. cover if you could find a shot that we're both happy with?" That's amazing. I don't know. Let me think about it. And she sent some shots to her, and we said that would be really nice. If what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess yeah. If you guys are okay with it, I am. That's so amazing. Yeah. And I was actually thinking to interview her. So. Wow. Maybe she's going to be the next one. But I wanted to ask, actually, what you always have a, a beautiful woman on the cover. Yeah. Why is that? And it's usually, it's never actually a celebrity, is it? It's usually just like... No, no, we've had, like, we've had many celebrities. Yeah, yeah but, yeah. but I, I think mainly it's been usually just like a beautiful model or... or we, what it, we haven't had as many celebrities mm -hmm. of late as we used to have, um, but yeah. But why exactly are you choosing... Well to do that. This, this is a magazine that appeals to men and women in mm -hmm. equal measure. I mm -hmm. think when, we've, when we last surveyed our readership, it was something like 51% women, 49% men, so mm -hmm. good. So we want something that appeals to both men and women. Mm -hmm. And uh, its the surveys tend to show that if you put a, a striking woman or a model or mm -hmm. a beautiful girl on the cover, that works for both. Okay. Whereas if you put a, a man on the cover, the men yeah, are. a lot, a lot of the time, depending on what the, the man on the cover is like, a lot of men are, you know, um, not so happy about it. I mean, we have, we once had a, mm -hmm. a cover we nearly did of a, a Colombian mod, supermodel um, guy, super handsome with long hair, and he was uh -huh. climbing out of the swimming pool, and he uh -huh. was get his arms like this, so uh -huh. you could see all his you know, shoulders and muscles just coming out of the pool. And we were going to use that shot on the cover and we took it into around our office and we showed it, these two macho guys in the art mm -hmm. room and said no yeah it's looking like you know you're turning into a magazine for homosexuals or something and oh come on guys calm yeah. down you know <laughs> so we're thinking okay let's stick to the women and it's clearly working no I, I think the main point is it's something that's that you stop when you're passing and you go oh, wow mm -hmm. that that because the cover has got a it's like um, it's it's the first impression, so it's something that you want people to be struck with. That they mm -hmm. like, that it appeals to them to well, let's at least pick it up and see what's inside. Yeah, it has to be eye catching, and it yeah. definitely is. Anyway, congratulations on this amazing achievement. This is uh, really rare in Marbella to be a business, and and it's not an easy business to do. So, yeah, well done. So oh. thank you, thank you again for coming and. And be sure to check out my blog, where you will find a little bit more information about uh, Ian or your favorite places and link also to the uh, website of Essential and the online version so you can read it. And yeah, stay tuned. Maybe we'll have a, another episode somewhere in the near future and, and talk more about the old Marbella days. Yeah, okay. All so right. lots of memories there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
This episode is brought to you by Sandon, a family-run furniture company with a brand new flagship store in Forum Marbella. <laughs>